What is up, everybody? My name is Tentacle, and welcome back to more Super Mario Galaxy. In the last episode, we took care of everything in the Freeze Flame Galaxy, and now it's time for Bowser's Dark Matter Plant. The final level of the bedroom, and my least favorite Grand Star level in the game. I'm not looking forward to this, but let's get through it. It's time for Darkness on the Horizon. So yeah, not only are there a lot of gravity mind tricks in this level, you also have to watch out for Dark Matter. It's very similar to Quicksand that we encountered in places like Dusty Dune Galaxy. But, uh, you don't want to fall in there. Let's just say that. If you thought Death by Quicksand was gruesome in this game, then you ain't seen nothing yet. I'd also like to point out this is my last video recording of 2022. It is currently New Year's Eve, so there is a very realistic chance this will not go up until next week, which will also be next year. So weird to think about that, man. It's also weird to think about how I'm going to be streaming Super Mario Sunshine at some point next year. Which is another game in the Super Mario 3D All-Stars collection. Now I actually want to talk to this Luma here, I think. The Dark Matter is eating holes in space! Watch out for those holes, or you'll fall into that Dark Matter. Yeah, that's another gimmick in this galaxy. There are square-shaped holes in the level itself. They're basically bottomless pits that lead straight into the dark matter. So, uh, don't even think about touching those either. Tell you what, the amount of times I died on this level as a kid was astronomical, no pun intended. I could just never find my way around, but for some reason, I'm making it a total cakewalk this time. As soon as I say that, I bounce right off of a fence. Now then, since I never mentioned this in the last episode, after we beat Bowser here, I'm going to be going back to Rosalina's library and reading the rest of the storybook chapters that have been unlocked since Bowser Jr.'s airship armada. And uh, one more thing about this level, be sure to get as many one-ups as you can, and stick to the walls of these platforms. probably going to have to be pushing my control stick in whatever direction the gravity is about to be in at this rate. There we go. We hitch a ride on that one, and I do believe we're home free. And wow! Okay. There's just a random goom beetle here. Been a while since we've seen one of those. Poor fella took a ride with me, only to still get squished. Thank you very much, game. And there's Bowser. How's it going? What? It's you! That's it, Mario. I'm gonna stomp you into space bits. Didn't you say that already, man? Anyways, it's time for round two against Bowser. And what you gotta watch out for this time is 
He's able to create shockwaves and do dark matter star spins. He does those dark matter spins instead of just simply chasing after you. But other than that, it's still pretty standard. You gotta make him fall on top of those lava domes, spin into his tail, etc, etc. Same stuff as before. He also creates way more fireballs at the beginning of each new phase, as you can see. Hmm, I'm trying to figure out how to put this. In the past, I didn't really put two and two together about Bowser's Dark Matter Spin attack. But ever since I've been replaying Super Mario Galaxy on here and on the Wii, I find it really, really cool that Bowser is essentially using the same attack that we're using, but in, in layman's terms, an evil form of it. It also helps to get a running start when Bowser's doing those Dark Matter spins because of how far he moves. Wow! Hardest Bowser level in the game beats it in one try. I really gotta have more confidence in myself, apparently. Bwahaha! <laughs> Not bad! I guess I chose the right guy to be my archenemy. At least you always put up a fight. But it's too bad for you, because my master plan is almost complete. Tough luck, Mario! Ugh, I sort of lost that voice. Towards the end of that monologue there. It's a good thing I got water before this recording, otherwise my throat would be in massive pain. Anyways, there's the Grand Star. Let's go. Now, I do believe the next cutscene is the most important one. However, there's also something else I need to say now that we've revived this next dome. I'll wait until the cutscene is over before I say anything. We have ascertained the location of your special one. Please take a look at the circle by your feet. That number represents the power stars you need to reach the center of the universe. That number will decrease with each power star you recover. And when it reaches zero, the Comet Observatory will regain full power and fly as a starship again and then we will be able to reach the center of the universe. But, uh, here's the thing. With how much of a completionist I've been, we can access the last level of the game now. But, uh, we're not gonna do that. See, the thing is, I've already decided this, I want to take care of that new galaxy, or that new dome, first. It's called the Engine Room. And even though I can access it now, it is with a heavy heart that I am saying I will not be doing the final level of the game until I beat the Engine Room. I'll unlock the galaxies in the Engine Room when we're done with Rosalina's story. I want to take care of that first.
because we are extremely behind. Let us begin. And there we go. Now we actually got to hear Rosalina say that. Chapter 6, Friends. One day, while the girls sat sipping tea, a tiny apricot-colored planet appeared on the horizon. From the planet, another luma of the same color emerged. Do you two know each other? The girl asked the two lumas gleefully. Despite the girls' excitement, they seemed uneasy. The two lumas neither drew closer nor backed away from each other. Instead, they just stared. Then one Luma broke the silence. My mama! At once, the apricot Luma parroted back. My mama! My mama! My mama! My mama! The two Lumas began to dance around the girl frantically, and neither showed any sign of stopping. The girl was so charmed by this adorable scene that she couldn't help but laugh. And that's when something very strange happened. Oh no, I think I know what happens next. Get the tissues ready, everybody! Oh wait, nope, never mind. I thought it was gonna get to the sad part of the story. False alarm. Put the tissues away. Suddenly, more Lumas began to pop out from the apricot planet. They were different colors, but they all shouted the same thing. My mama! My mama! The sight of all the shouting Lumas only made the girl laugh harder. What am I going to do with all these children? The Lumas just stared blankly as she doubled over laughing. I guess we'll have to name each and every one of you. Tomorrow, once she had finished naming them all, she would begin moving all the Lumas into the new house. Chapter 7, The Telescope After seeing their hundredth comet, a sudden thought popped into the girl's head. I wonder if my home planet is still as blue as it was. That's when she remembered her father's telescope. Peeking into the telescope, a tiny blue dot floated into sight. It was smaller than a star bit. How strange. It's so far away, but it feels so close. She twisted the knob of the telescope, and the blue dot grew until she could make out a grassy hill dotted with flowers. It seemed very familiar to her. Zooming even closer, a terrace on the hill came into view. I used to go stargazing there when I lived on my home planet. She remembered rubbing the sleep out of her eyes as she followed her father up that hill to look at the stars. Oh, wait. No, don't hit me with the feels now. She remembered how she and her brother would sled down that hill. And having picnics with her mother on that hill on bright and windy days. Oh, no, the music stopped. This is the true feels moment of the story. Get your tissues ready now, everyone. I'll give you a few seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, don't say I didn't warn you. I want to go home. I want to go home right now. The girl burst into tears and the Lumas didn't know what to do. I want to go home. I want to go back to my house by the hill. I want to see my mother. The girl was shouting now, her face wet with tears. But I know she's not there. 
I knew all along that she wasn't out there in the sky. Be because Because... She's sleeping under the tree on the hill! Oh, there it is! Oh... You want to know the saddest part of this story? I never got what that was supposed to mean as a kid. But when I replayed this for the first time on the Switch, and I read that part of the story, I started bawling. And even then, I'm tearing up right now. This is the most tear-jerking story I've ever read in a Mario game. The girl's cries echoed through the stars, and a hush fell over the area. Ooh. 